reliability. Not a word you'd associate with some e-bike motors. It's a stormy story of bearing and belt failure, wart ingress and seizures for a variety of reasons. Motors are not alone. Frames crack, suspension blows, bearings break and chains snap. We love to take our EMTVs to ever more out-of-the-way places where stream crossings, bogs and mountain weather are ever-present. Our trail centres and bike parks are also laced with puddles. This dirty, often polluted water waiting to be forced deep into the hearts of our bikes. Abrasive sandstone and bearing seals are never going to be the best mates. So are the brands to blame? After all, they do go through quite rigorous testing procedures. Now we saw recently with Pete Collard, the owner of the e-bike motor centre in the UK, some truly appalling examples of motor failure and water ingress uh, on some motors. The reality is that a lot of the time people actually blame the motor manufacturer for those problems. When in actual fact the problems are caused by people transporting their e-bikes on the back of cars where there's lots of pressure in that, in that area and also from pressure washing your motors in the crankshaft area. The reality is actually that many motor brands go to extreme lengths to protect the reliability and waterproofness of their motors, which is why we are in the Bafang Test Lab here in uh, Suzhou City, two hours west of Shanghai, to go through the length, the level of detail that these guys are into to ensure that longevity. Can I introduce you then to Toby, who is the manager of the test center here in Bafang. Now, it's important to understand that there's some international standards which need to be achieved before a motor can be produced. We've got uh, IPX5 and 6 testing here, and this here is IPX7, which is the highest level of testing which a brand needs to achieve. Now, this requires a motor being submerged into a tank of water, a one meter tank of water, for 30 minutes, but actually the fang exceeds the test levels, which we'll come on to in a minute. Okay, Toby, take it away. This will be fun. I mean, oh, here we go, hold on a minute. So this motor is literally gonna be abused to some extreme fireman standard. Oh, look at this. I mean, that is a serious, that is a serious jet of water going onto that motor. That's probably more intense than a pressure washer. Let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look at the, the beating that's having. So the question is, will that motor make it? Well, we're going to open the casing up later to see if any water's got into the system. Um, right, we've got some uh, tests here which are over and above what's expected of a motor brand. We've got the first one, which is it's kind of like a pressure cooker. This is where they can submerge that motor under pressure and they can see if there's any leaks in the system, such things as seals or bearings or housing leakages. So, uh, Toby, do you wanna show us how this one works? Okay. Ooh, crikey. All right, are there any leaks in it? So obviously you'll see some bubbles, a bit like a, a tube, uh, you know, when you're trying to test for a puncture. It seems to me that that is, Looks like it's pretty good, right, Toby? So how, how long will you leave this in here for? Uh, one minute. One minute, okay. Yeah. So, Toby, I think the one minute is up. It seems to have met this requirement, right? It seems to have passed. Do you want to give them more? Do you want to take the motor out? Okay. Um, so, whilst Toby's taking the motor out there, let me introduce you to this horrible, truly horrible piece of equipment. This is the dirty water test. Now, the water in there is the kind of water you'd find in a Welsh bog or a Scottish highland where cows or sheep have been hanging around bathing in the water for weeks on end. So what happens here is this motor is being submerged into that truly disgusting water for five seconds over 1500 cycles. So this motor has been bubbling away for uh, the, the, over this morning. We're now going to take the motor out to see if actually any water has got into the system. One thing I didn't point out actually is the motor and the wiring is all submerged. So the motor's running while this test is being taken place. So uh, they're basically just trying to cook and destroy motors in this place. Right, let's have a look at the results.
Okay, seriously, folks, um, this has been submerged 1,500 times in five seconds. That's quite an extreme test for waterproofness. I've had to put my glasses on to just check for you guys to make sure this is legit. I honestly cannot see any moisture in this system. Now, I want to also point out that this is one test. I, you know, I cannot tell you what will happen in a in a in a Welsh bog or a Scottish Highland, but I think they've gone to quite extreme lengths to ensure you guys have got reliable, trouble-free motors. But maybe there are forces at work which are not built into the testing process. I visited Ray for one possible explanation. Uh, Ray, I've been to many motor companies. They go to great lengths to try to ensure that water is kept out of their motors. They do try super hard, yet we still have motor failure because of moisture. Why do you think that is? Well, the problem is it's not pushing in water when you submerge a motor in a tank. It's the fact that something happens unusually is that the water is sucked in by the motor. And this happens because the air inside the motor can suddenly cool if you go through a stream or a puddle. The motor might not fail then, but sometime later it may. If you continue to go through and have this scenario, uh, the motor will probably fail for sure. This is an experiment to show that when you cool air inside a container, it pulls tightly on the sides of the container and if there's a hole anywhere in that container, anything near that hole will be drawn in. We're gonna demonstrate how water gets into an e-bike motor. Here's a cold motor and here's a warm motor and we're going to show you how it happens. We start the experiment by having some warm water in one container, probably about 35 to 40 degrees and an empty cool container. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour the warm water into the container simulating the body inside of the motor this is a thousand cc's, probably five times what you would have in a motor, but it's the size we have for the experiment. We're going to simulate the Highland Mist by using some blue colored water and putting it into this little container here. There's warm water in here and I'm gonna get rid of it, but the air is gonna be warm, simulating the warm air only in the motor. And here we are with a motor with warm air in it. So what I've got here, Ray, is a really cold river crossing. Okay? You have indeed. Here's my, so here's my cold river crossing coming up. Spray with confidence. Okay, here we go, cold river crossing. So I guess we're looking at... Round the side, all round. Whoa, look at that! And there it goes. Wow, so that's the West Highland air being sucked into the motor. Absolutely. I mean, it's an extreme scenario, right? But that's basically That's what's exactly happening. what's happening. Okay, this is five times larger, the air volume, but we've got to have something that shows exactly what's happening. And this shows clearly the Highland mist being sucked into the motor. What is actually happening when a motor is cooled? What's the science behind this? Well, if the motor's not an oil-filled motor, uh, there will be air inside, the void inside the motor, maybe about 200 cc's or so. And when you go through a stream, this is suddenly cooled, isn't it? It, it absolutely is, because the motor might be 40, 50 or 60 degrees, it could be more. And when it goes through a stream, the outside of the motor is cooled very quickly with a splash, and that makes the air inside contract. Now, when that happens, the air pressure outside is forcing anything that's around the rims of the seals inside the motor. In fact, it's sucked in. So these, but these could be actually tiny droplets, couldn't they? They may be, even a mist will yeah. do it. 
It doesn't have to be uh, anything else. It, you can, of course, be droplets as well. Yeah. You mean like a Scottish or a Welsh mist? <laughs> Absolutely, and they're pretty solid. Yeah, so I guess it's what we're talking about. It's the accumulation of these droplets over time. It that, is. That's causing the failure. Absolutely, over time. And it's worse if you get uh, electronics within the unit alongside the electrics. They get vibration as well. But the problem is you get electrolysis on the circuits. So that can go wrong as well. So not only can the shafts degrade through rusting, the electronics can fail as well. And it may be some time before this happens, but if you have a seal that's not working very well, it's gonna come your way. Uh, Ray, fantastic demonstration. Uh, I guess the question that these guys will want to know is what's the potential for moisture and water to get into their e-mounted bug motors? When air cools, it reduces by that figure there, by volume. With a motor of 200 cc's air void, cooling at 30 degrees, reduction by volume per cc is that figure there. And if you do the calculation, it comes out at 22 cc's, which is quite a lot. But maybe with an E motor, you might get one or two cc's in at the most. But nevertheless, that is quite a lot inside a motor body. Wow, now thanks to Bafang out in China for a look behind the scenes look at their motor water testing. Thanks to you guys actually for highlighting the problems with e-mounted bike motors for the last seven years. Um, I personally haven't had hardly any motor failure, but then again, Maybe I go through different motors a lot of the time, so it's not the same situation as you guys. Thanks to Ray for a fantastic demonstration there of one possible explanation. Uh, I've got to ask you, Ray, what might be the solution to water getting into e-bug motors? Well, maybe the motors ought to be more like car motors, full of oil. <laughs> OK, well, I guess we have seen some uh, examples recently with Pinion and also the ZF. But like I say, I think there are mid-drive motors out there which are more reliable than other ones. It comes down to the design, I think, right? Is it not? It does indeed, it's designed. And e-bike motors are fairly new. And when you uh, generate a new uh, type of motor, there's always problems, yeah. so it's a learning curve. But what we, need to need, what we need from you guys is some comments, some questions, both from you, the riders, and also maybe from the motor manufacturers too. So uh, yeah, let's get involved. <laughs>